My name is Dennis Kafura. I'm a professor in the Department of Computer Science, and I've been at Virginia Tech for quite a long time. I've been here since 1982, and so I'm a Hokie of long standing. I was interested in computer science because I'm, as an undergraduate, I was actually a mathematics major, and that's what my undergraduate degree is in. But I'm a failed mathematician in the sense that uh, I encountered a course that I in mathematics that completely convinced me that mathematics was not going to be my future. And uh, serendipitously at the same time, the university that I was attending uh, was developing a, a computer science program. My name is Austin Corey Bart. Uh, I go by Corey. I am a fourth year PhD student here at Virginia Tech. Uh, my major is computer science, but I'm also doing a certification in the learning sciences. So I've been doing CS education research. And my particular area of focus is introductory computing experiences. So how do we first start learning how to program and get to know the topics in computer science, and in this case, computational thinking? So in the computational thinking course, what really interests me about this course and where I get a lot of personal benefit is because of the pedagogical techniques that we're using in this course. So it's very much based on the notion of active learning in small groups. There are three main learning objectives in the course, uh, abstraction, algorithms, and social impacts. And the first two concepts there, abstraction algorithms, are completely different from anything students have ever seen before. And that's really crucial because this course is meant for anyone. Any undergraduate with any experience, none or complete, should be able to take this course and succeed. We deliberately assign students into cohorts to maximize the differences in the major fields of study that they're from. Students work in groups and cohorts and they're, they're told to turn to each other first. It's not meant to it's not meant to be a team project or something. It's something where the students are able to use each other as resources and build on each other's learning. And it's very different from this idea of, well, what's cheating and what's not cheating that you see in a lot of introductory courses. And we found that this has been very useful for them because it brings different perspectives to bear on the questions that we're having them work on. It allows them to see implicitly that the techniques that they're learning about computation are equally applicable to lots of other disciplines as well. We're much more focused on, let's get some data and use it to answer questions. And I mean, this is, this is definitely creative. Whether or not it's an effective storytelling measure is not even the important question to be asked here. It's just, did we learn something? Did it change our way of looking at the world? The course is also very success oriented. Uh, we do not view this as a class where the grade at the end is the most important thing that either we as instructors are concerned about or we think that students in the class should be concerned about. We're much more interested in developing the skills uh, that students will need at the end of this course to make use of what they're learning in very uh, practical ways. I've seen several different students have different levels of success. One of the ones that astounds me the most is we had an international studies major who came in the first semester and she, she had never had any programming experience before. And she did a really fantastic job that semester. I was very impressed. I remember sitting down with her a few times and seeing those moments when she, she suddenly got some of the core concepts involved in the programming aspects of the course, the algorithm section. And next semester, we brought her back as an undergraduate TA for the course. She graduated that spring, and now she's actually got a job doing data science things for another company. I mean, it's, it's astounding to me that someone can come out of this course ready to go into the real world with computational skills you know, they've got no prior background a year ago in computer science. We were very happy to have this uh, exhibit in the library because it provides a way of uh, articulating to the broad university community what's going on in what I think is an exciting and interesting class. The library exhibit for the computational thinking course is really based around two of the things that we do very early in the course. One of the parts of the exhibit deals with a computational modeling system called NetLogo. And through this computational modeling system, what we try and show students in the class is that computation has relevance to them because NetLogo has a library of models from a, a wide variety of academic disciplines. The interaction with the Blockly exhibit is definitely one of my favorite parts. They work with a block-based programming environment and it's a good chance for people off the street to suddenly start programming and creating real things and solving real problems from day one. And we use a similar approach in the course with a much more sophisticated environment, but the idea holds. It's, it's lowering the barriers for anyone to just come in and start playing with it. 
And I think that's one of the most important things that we're doing in the course and in computer science education research in general is making things more accessible to people. Because it doesn't reflect poorly on other people if computing is hard, it reflects poorly on the teachers. So we definitely have an onus on us to make it accessible. And I think the exhibit really exemplifies one of our best tools for doing so. I wanted to emphasize that the small group model that we have for active learning each day also has other support mechanisms around it. So we make heavy use of undergraduate teaching assistants. Typically these are students who have taken the course in previous semesters and are themselves passionate about the course. And they provide a very close in way of providing both feedback on work in the course, but also they attend each class and provide immediate and direct support for the learning activities that take place. So it's always this very interactive, collaborative experience. And th there's always a few recurring elements. There's always a moment where the student will realize, wow, this computer is so stupid. So for me, that's a great point, because I know, wow, you've got one of the really big ideas here, is that computers may be powerful, but they are still second fiddle to humans. So it's a very realistic and, and um, we hope, meaningful experience for students. So we invite everyone to come and, and enjoy the course that we've developed for this purpose.